Hi guys, welcome to this week's Warlord Wednesday. I'm really excited about something that's coming out from Warlord uh, and it's Campaign Market Garden. Really looking forward to this. As uh, you may not know, but for Christmas I got <gasps> British Airborne. British Airborne HQ and a three inch mortar so campaign book looks really good um, it's got just a, a quick overview of what's in it there's 26 scenarios which sounds amazing uh, American scenarios British scenarios uh, war in a small space an actual campaign game which will be really good there's also interesting thing called going solo I wonder if that's uh, one play one play games that, that'll be interesting yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to that there's also a section on legends of market garden so obviously it's going to be uh, prominent characters and rules for them so that should be good uh, the Operation Market Garden actually took place over the period of nine days in September 1944. So to get 26 scenarios out of nine days is some goal. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, on to me Napoleonics. I've put the the HQ together and that's not ready for paint and so I'm going to show you doing that because there's some things I had to do that was different to doing the normal plastics so I'll show you that and then I'll carry on with where I left off last week with the painting so let's go to the table and have a look okay guys so these are the command figures now they've done it uh, almost exactly the same way as it did the, the other infantry the only difference is because they were metal miniatures I made sure that I scrubbed them where well, I used a toothbrush and soap, warm soapy water before I started only because it releases the it cleans the mold release agents off them and if you don't do that then the, the paint will, will chip off and flake at a later date anyway so that's where they're up to now I see the same base the only thing I've got to do is you can see here this is where the the flag poles will go now the the I've got a small drill I'm going to drill through the hand here insert the these flag poles which will go through the hand and into the little pocket there again the same with that guy there he needs to drill through his hand down into that one so his pole, pole can go there as well so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to install the flag poles and glue them and then I'll start painting so I'll do that now so I'll do this one first I've drilled the holes out um, using a just use a one mil bit I'll just uh, show you that one goes in there and the second one goes in like so I'll just glue these in now and then when they set all they start painting them okay guys so this is where I'm up to I've added another four colours and um, what I've done is I've started off with this bag here I believe it's called a bread bag I've done that with the uh, bleach bone then I've done the 
outer side of the water bottle with um, Andrea Blue. I've done the barrel of the rifle plus the um, print lock with lead belt yet. And last, I've done the bayonet using mithril silver. Okay, so I'm going to leave these overnight and then come back tomorrow night to do some more. What I've done on this stage is I've done the collars and cuffs with Teclis Blue. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've gone over all the straps and the stitching on the tunics with Ceramite White. Now this is a base paint I find the base paint seems to have a stronger pigment and they go over other colours better. And last thing I used this liquid gold for the little buckle in the middle of the uh, webbing where the, the straps cross. Oops. And all the light too. So that's it guys, that's the first eight done. Okay guys, today we're going to look at the big guns. Yes, we're going to look at the artillery. Now artillery comes in a variety of flavours. There's battalion guns, horse artillery, foot artillery, siege artillery, rifled, horse, foot and siege artillery. And they all have different ranges. But they all have the same number of attack, attacks as such. Right. So these are smoothbore foot artillery. So their range is 48 inches, but again, because I'm using 15 mil figures in this demo, then it's centimeters, so it's 48 centimeters. So 48 centimeters, if I put it out, it's, it's, it's a good range. It's quite a good distance. Now, artillery guns fire varies um, with range so what they call short range which is up to six centimeters the artillery will fire with three dice at medium range which is up to half the range of the weapon so with this being 48 up to 24 centimeters it will fire with two dice and then up to its maximum range it, it fires with one dice. So that's that's the same for all artillery. The the distance they fire it, depending on how many dice they roll to hit. Now the reason for the three dice on the short range is obviously because they count that as uh, as canister range. So they use canister. Now there is hit modifiers for the artillery uh, if you shoot at a unit in attack column then you get plus one so if this unit was in column like that then the artillery would get a plus one modifier to hit so as with most things you need to roll a four to hit now We've already measured this and they're at medium range. 24 inch 24 centimeters is medium range. So with a medium range, they are in attack column. So they get plus one to hit. So what they would normally do is they would normally need fours, 
Well, because they had an attack column, they need threes. So roll threes. Oh, look at that. Four. So they just put three hits on that unit. Now, they now have to take a morale check. Now, if you shot at by artillery, there's negative morale modifiers. So if you hit by artillery at long range, then there's a minus one to your morale. If you hit by artillery at medium or short range, then there's minus two to your morale. So now their morale is four, minus two. That means that on these three dice, because you've got three hits against them, you need to roll sixes for all three of them. So and you got none. So they immediately took three casualties, which means that the shaken, so cannon fire is very effective against most units. So because they've took three casualties, they have to do a break test. Now the rules for artillery are if you have to do a break test and you suffer at least one casualty from artillery then you're at minus one. We roll two dice. I've seen this before. Uh, if it's a four, well, so it's eight, so it's minus one. So that gives them a seven. So a seven. The unit holds its ground, stays where it is and does not move. So they have the effect of artillery. So as you can see, quite powerful. The closer you get to them, the more dangerous they become. Okay guys, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Take care.